okay okay guys so let me jo just go through with the demo so first we are starting basically palo alto firewall pcnc training and the cost for this training is 7000 and we will start this particular batch from 26 of feb it's a weekend batch so we will have we will be having classes only on saturday and sunday starting from 9 am ist to 11 am ist okay now let me first tell you so this particular it's a training of around 32 hours you will get the lifetime interview support so if you have a let's suppose you have an interview you can contact us we will help you with the interview we will give you the tips how you can crack the interview and also we will take your mock interview if required you will also get one lab workbook which you help for preparing the theory part of your Palo Alto Fiverr training. You will get the lifetime access of all the recorded videos. So let's suppose if you have missed some classes, you can cover these classes by watching these recorded sessions. We will, we will also help you building the lab on your laptop. If, you, if your laptop is not that much capable, like it is not having good RAM, good resources, then we will also building, we will also help you building the same lab over the Google Cloud. At this point, I have already covered the weekend classes. I will also basically help you with the practical issues discussions. So let's suppose if you, you find any issues in your organization and if you want to discuss with me, I'll give you the separate timings and we can connect over the Zoom call and we will discuss that issue. You will also get the mock interview support and this particular support we will be generally give to every students. Now, let me start with the Palo Alto Firewall course content. What are the things I will cover? Okay, so basically in first class, I will start with the platform and architecture. So if you have heard the name like SP3 architecture in Palo Alto, right? because it's a unique architecture. So this particular architecture I will cover, what are the hardware model we are having for Palo Alto, what are the VM series devices we are having for Palo Alto, all these things I will cover into your platform and architecture. I will also go through what is single pass architecture. Then I will start most important thing, which is flow logic. Or we can say life of a packet inside the pan OS. When my Palo Alto file receives a packet, how it will basically process this packet? What are the different different stages that particular packet go through? What are the checklist it will do in your ingress stage? Then what are the check it will perform at your slow path, which is your session setup state? Then what are the checks checklist it is having at, at your first path, at your app ID, content ID, and your forwarding stage? All these things we will cover in detail and here basically i will discuss the flow logic as per your latest pan os 10.x because in 10.x they have done lots of modification they have added lots of things lots of we can say features they have added lots of cache memory cache information they have added right so all these things i will cover here then we will discuss the initial configuration so let's suppose you're working in a production environment and and you are now going to deploy this firewall in your environment. Now, what are the initial configuration you have to configure? You have to do how you can create the CLI script means how you can create this configuration template. So which you can basically directly, you can just run it through the CLI. So it, like your DNS configuration, your management interface configuration, all these kind of things we will see here in initial configuration. How we can get the initial access of your Palo Alto firewall? What are the default username, default password, default IP address? How we can manage the configuration? What kind of configuration we are having? Like what is the candidate config file? What is the running configuration file? Then we, we will also discuss here the commit. What is auto commit? What is the Chrome jobs? When we will do the commit, what are the demons which is in which basically impacted with this commit? How we can troubleshoot the commit related issues? All these things I will cover. Then we will go towards your licensing and software updates where, where I will cover how we can basically do the licensing. 
let's suppose your firewall is having the internet access then how we can register this particular palo alto firewall with the support portal how we can fetch the license from that support portal how we can download these license keys manually and we can upload what are the best practice followed by the organizations all these things we will cover here in licensing and software updates then we will see account administration so here i will cover let's say we are having some l1 engineers then l2 engineers then l3 engineers how we can basically create the accounts for these particular users how we can assign the roles how we can basically configure the role based access for these particular engineers so all these things i will cover then we will see the account administrator using the radius so let's suppose you are having cisco ice or you are having your active directory or you are having aruba clear pass these kind of next solution how you can integrate these next solution with your palo alto firewall what is the admin roles how we can create these roles so i will cover that part and after that i will basically move towards your interface configuration how we can configure the interface how to create the security zones what is the concept of security zones in palo alto firewall then we will see what is layer 2 deployment what is layer 3 deployment what is virtual wire deployment what is step mode deployment what are the use case for these particular deployments so we will discuss these use cases here then i will tell you what is the concept of sub interfaces what is the concept of dscp how we can configure palo alto as a dscp client how we can configure palo alto as a dscp server and how we can configure palo alto as a dscp relays and so all these three things we will see here and all these things we will do practically guys i will create dscp servers and everything then we will see what is the concept of virtual routers how we can enable the routing on your palo alto firewall how we can create these virtual routers what is the concept of multi vr setup and what are the use case to configure two virtual routers three virtual routers so all these things we will see and after that i will move towards your security zone and net because you know every firewall basically they are just designed for doing your net they are designed for for your security policies and they are just designed for doing your vpn stuff these are the three key features of your firewalls or how we can configure the layer 7 inspection these are the four main features of your palo alto firewall and how we can basically achieve all of them so here we will see what is the concept of security policy is a net policy how we can basically config do the configuration for security policies how we can do the policy administration how we can configure the source net destination net so here i will cover almost all the use cases of, of your net like we will see what is the concept of your dynamic net when what is the concept of pet how basically pet happens for your icmp traffic your ship traffic your ipsec traffic like how these kind of protocols is handled by the net in palo alto what is the concept of net over subscription in palo alto in destination net we will see how we can do the one to one mapping how we can do the one to many mapping so all these things how we can do the port forwarding all these things we will cover here then after i'll just move towards your app id where we will go with the app id overview how basically we can write the application based policies what are the things we have to take care while writing the application based policies how basically app engine works let's suppose we have received the tcp connection then which which packet of tcp go through with your app engine all these things we will see in detail then i will explain what is the concept of application groups and filters how we can basically create a filters for all your rix level 5 application rix level 4 application your media streaming applications how we can group multiple applications and we can create a security policies then i'll go towards your content id where we will see anti virus protection anti spyware protection how we can configure all these things how we can basically create this configuration let's say you are working in an organization and you want to just configure these layer 7 profiles for first time then that they these kind of activities generally known as like lockdown activities so these are having some phases like 
what are the things we have to take care in phase one what are the things we have to take care in phase two what are the things we have to take care in phase three because generally these kind of things we will do in the phases how we can basically fine tune these signatures and also all these things i will discuss what is your vulnerability protection what is your url filtering how we can configure the url filtering basically in your palo alto firewall so we will see the detailed things in your url filtering what is the concept of external dynamic list then we will see what is your file blocking all these things we will see here just give me a one minute guys someone has started his video okay so and after that i will start your file blocking policies how we can basically block the uploading of files downloading of different different types of files what is wildfire how basically palo well to provide you the zero day attack protection what's that what is the wildfire operation so we will see all these thing in details and guys one more thing i want to tell you here we will do all these practicals in vmware so we have a we have a Palo Alto firewall with the license for all these features in VMware, and we will do all these things practically. I will basically try to try to download these particular antivirus kind of things from the internet, and we will see how my firewall is basically blocking these connections. Then we will see the detailed discussion we will have on your zone protection and DOS protection. I will launch different, different types of attack by using my Kali Linux machine from outside. And after I will configure zone protection and DOS protection. So basically here we will see how we can protect from the TCP floods like SYN attack, SYN flood attack, like your ICMP flood attack, your UDP flood attack, your IP flood attack, how we can basically protect from these kind of attacks, how we can protect from the anti spoofing, all these things we will see in your zone protection and DOS protection. And after that, I will start your SSL decryption, which is the most important feature of your Palo Alto firewall because every organization, they purchase Palo Alto firewall just to configure your layer seven inspection. And for layer seven inspection, we need a SSL decryption. So first we will see what is SSL handshake. And after that, I will tell you how SSL decryption is configured on my Palo Alto firewall. How we can manage the certificates. What is SSL handshake? Then in SSL decryption, we will see the outbound SSL decryption and inbound SSL decryption. How we can configure it? What are the things basically is there? What is the concept of FPTCP segments? which engine basically process these ssl related packets how these decryption works we will see in detail how palo alto fire will do the modification for certificate how it will basically maintain the different different session keys everything we will see in detail which means how your ssl the ssl handshake is implemented in your palo alto firewall we will cover this part here then we will see shs decryption because nowadays everyone launch your they will launch basically they will create a sss tunnels and they will be nowadays almost all kind of attacks is going through your shs tunnels and now if someone is created the sss tunnel and they have bypassed your firewall now how we can configure these kind of policies on my firewall so I, we can basically protect our users from this particular SHS tunnels. Then I will move towards your user ID. And I have seen guys in the market, people is not having good understanding of your user ID feature in Palo Alto. They don't have enough knowledge on your global protect and they don't have enough knowledge on VPNs. How these three things we will configure. And guys, these are my three favorite topics actually. I will tell you, what is the exact role of your user ID? What is the what is the role of your user ID demons? What it is what is the role of your author D demon here? How we can do the troubleshooting for this? How we can integrate our Palo Alto firewall with the Active Directory? Then, what is the concept of user to IP mapping? If you want only user to IP mappings, then what are the configuration you have to configure? What is the concept of your user ID isn't? So we will see 
all these things in details. And here I will also cover you how we can configure the group mapping. And later on, we will use these groups into our security policies. Mean now, after that, how we can configure the security policies on the basis of users. So let's suppose if you are from the HR department and you want to access any kind of job posting site, we will allow the access of this website. But if HR people, they are trying to access like a social networking site, we will block that particular access. So all these things, how we can achieve, how we can control all of them. So we will see in detail. And after that, I will start your IPsec site to site VPN where First, we will have a detailed discussion of your phase one and phase two exchange, like what is the concept of what are the packet we are having in your main main mode, in aggressive mode, in phase two, what is your quick mode, how many packets they will exchange, what are the content of these particular packets. And apart from this best part, guys, I will tell you how we can decrypt your, because if you know the basics of IPsec VPN, you know, Message number five onwards, like message number five, six, then seven, then eight, then nine. They are in encrypted form, right? Now I will tell you how we can decrypt these messages, how we can take it out your session keys like SKIDE, SKIDD, and SKIDE from the PAL world to what are the, how we, you can enable the advanced debug mode and how you will get these keys to decrypt these particular packets. So we will take the Wireshark capture and we will decrypt all these packets. And after that, I will also explain you how we can decrypt the ESP packets. Everything we will see in detail. And after that, I have basically written here a few use cases of your IPsec VPN. So there are around 13 use case of your IPsec VPN, like IPsec site to site VPN between two parallel to devices where both firewall having a static IP. And here we will use pre shared key. In another example, we will see IPsec site to site VPN between pal two parallel to firewall where both having a static IP, but this time we will use the certificates. IPsec site to site VPN between two parallel to devices having overlapping networks. Let's suppose your customer, they are also using 10.1.0 slash 20 series. And then other side, they are also using same series. Now, how you can basically configure this VPN. IPsec side to side VPN between Palo Alto devices, where one peer having dynamic IP. IPsec side to side VPN between Palo Alto devices, where one peer is behind the net gateway. So we will see all these particular practicals. Then let's suppose how you can configure dual IPsec side to side VPN tunnel with the dual ISPs. So if your one ISP failed, your tunnel is basically start walking from the secondary ISP. So we will do the failover using the tunnel monitoring. We will do the failover by using the static route path monitoring. And we will do the configuration by using virtual router and PVF. So these are the three ways to basically achieve this particular thing. The used way, people always use this failover using the tunnel monitoring. Then we will see IPsec configuration between Palo Alto and your Cisco SA firewall. IPsec side to side VPN between Cisco SA and Palo Alto where one end having the IP address from DSCP. And configuration route-based IPsec VPN using OSPF. Then we will see IPsec side to side VPN like hub and spoke kind of deployment. We will see all these particular practicals in detail. And after that, I'll just move towards your global protect, where we will see the global protect connection flow. So guys, when we connect with the global protect, they will exchange around 16 messages with each other. What are these messages? We will see, we will do deep and dive on these messages. If you know this connection flow, you will able to troubleshoot any kind of issues with regards to your global protect. Then we will see global protect connection methods where we will see the prec lab. We will do the lab on user logon on demand. Then we will do the lab on pre logon, then on demand, pre logon, then user logon. So all these particular four things, four practical we will cover in detail or all these four deployment modes we will cover in detail. I will also explain you the management and reporting, how we can do the syslog server integration, how you can integrate your NetFlow server, 
what is log types, what is dashboard, basic logging, basic reports. And in Panorama, I will not take any session on Panorama, but what I will, I'll give you one seven hours of course, just in 300 INR. We will give you one voucher so you can purchase that course from our website for this particular Panorama. So Panorama part, we will cover from these particular seven hours video course. And after that, basically, I will I will also cover your active passive high availability, how we can configure active passive HA, how we can configure active active high availability, how we can configure this active active HA. In active active HA, I will cover all your three kind of deployment, like using floating IP HA lab, our load share HA lab, and mixed mode HA lab. And apart from this, guys, I will also run through one troubleshooting webinar where we will discuss what is the concept of your packet filter, packet capture, flow basic, and TCP dump, how we can configure all of them. Then we will, I will also cover your management plane troubleshooting and your data plane troubleshooting, how we can do that. So these are the things, and this is the basically course content of this particular training. Now, now let me first, tell you what are the labs I'm using, what are the lab topologies I'm using. And after that, I will just go through these particular three topics today. And after that, I will just bind my demo. So let me just show you my lab topologies. I'll go into eBenji. So guys, this is the first lab topology. And around 70% practical, I will basically do in this particular lab only, where I'm having my Palo Alto firewall, where Ethernet 1 slash 1 interface of your Palo has a connectivity with my Wi Fi, with my home Wi Fi, where I'm getting the internet. And also, I'm having one Kali Linux machine and I'm having one router as well on my outside network. So, from this Kali Linux machine, I will launch any kind of attacks towards my DMZ, where Ethernet 1 slash 3 interface I will use as a DMZ, where I'm having these particular Linux servers, where I am running Telnet, SHS, and HTTP services. Apart from this, I do have a one more interface, which is Ethernet 1 slash 2, which is a part of my inside zone, where I am having one internal Linux machine as a test PC, and I am having one window machine as a test PC. And I do have a separate management network for my management connectivity. Don't worry, you don't need to create these kind of labs. I will share these particular topologies with you. Only you need to just do the lab setup according to me. So I will help you building this part, this kind of lab in your EVNZ. So this is the first lab which I'm gonna use. Apart from this, for your high availability, I will use this particular lab. This is this is my HA lab where we are having two Palo Alto firewalls and this lab we will do for active, passive, high availability. Let's close this lab. Then we do have a one more lab like HA active, active lab. So in active, active HA lab, no, I will not use this lab because this is for some troubleshooting batch. So this is active passive lab then we are having active active lab and this particular lab i will use for asymmetric kind of configuration if you have you are having asymmetry in your network so you we will use this particular lab for that then this particular lab i will use for your routing related configuration where we will configure routing here routing here then how we can basically configure the routing on palo alto firewall so all these networks they are able to reach believe that each other this here we will also discuss the concept of your policy based forwarding your ecmp and here we will i will also cover your dual isp kind of scenarios just close it and after that i will have one more lab which is your ipsec vpn so this particular lab i will use for ipsec vpn where i am having around three Palo Alto firewall and two ESA firewalls up along with few routers, where we will cover 
all kind of your BPN use cases by using this particular lab. So this is the lab topology I'm going to use for your BPN lab. Okay, your active active lab I can simulate into this one only. Okay, so we will do we will use the same thing for active active lab as well. I generally use this particular topology as well for your active active lab. Ethernet 1 slash 3, I will use as a HA3 interface in your active active scenario. So these are the lab topologies which I'm gonna use, guys. Now let's go here. Now let's discuss, guys, what is the concept of next generation firewalls and what is your legacy firewalls and why we are here and why we will we can choose your Pell well to firewall. Okay. So let me just explain, guys. So if you see. I'm having this particular diagram where I'm having one parallel to firewall. Ethernet 1 slash 2 interface is, is a part of my inside zone where I'm having one test machine having IP address 10, 1, 100. And Ethernet 1 slash 2 interface is a part of outside zone which have a connected with the internet service provider and where I'm having one server. Let's say it's a CNET server, cnets.com web server hosted on 151.7.100. Okay, now, so guys, if you remember, if I'll take an example of your legacy firewalls. So in legacy firewall, what we used to have, when we used to write the ACLs or your security rules or your security policies, being any firewall, okay. So that time when we write the rules by using these firewalls, we used to, have I your source IP address? We use the destination IPs, IPs or we can say subnet. Destination IP or maybe subnet. We use the source port, destination port in case of your TCP and UDP traffic, right? And your protocols. These are the five things generally we use as if you want to write the ACL security policies, or if you want to block any kind of traffic into your legacy firewalls, right? But nowadays, if I'll take an example of very, very popular application like BitTorrent. Nowadays for BitTorrent, IP address is not fixed. This part is not fixed. Source port, or generally, let me just write here port numbers. That is also not fixed. They can run in on any ports. They are using dynamically changing, changeable IP address and port numbers. Every minute their IP and port number will change. Now, if you want to block the traffic for BitTorrent, how you can do that? By using these legacy firewalls, you will not be able to do that because in legacy firewall, we are blocking the traffic on the visual source IP, destination IP source for destination for protocol, but these values for BitTorrent is not fixed because maybe BitTorrent can run on port 80. Maybe it can run on port 53. These are, and port 80, we, it's for web traffic and 53 for DNS, right? It can start running on these ports. Now, how we can block this kind of traffic? So guys, to block this kind of traffic, what you need a some kind of solution who can provide you the app identification. Or you need a some kind of firewall or some kind of device who can provide you the layer seven inspection. Because these legacy firewall here, we used to write the security policies or your ACLs on the basis of your layer three information, which is your source IP and destination IP and your layer four information, which is your source port and destination port. But for the application, these values nowadays is not fixed. They are changing, right? So that is the main reason guys, we require nowadays NGFW, next generation firewall because if I take an example, one of the design. So let me just go into this legacy design. So if you will see here, I'm having one firewall, right? So I will just go with the Cisco perspective guys here. So let's suppose 
we are dealing with the we are dealing with the cisco product right so let's say this is the legacy firewall which is your cisco ac this cisco ac is working very fine for your layer 3 and layer 4 traffic we can configure the security policies like a access control list and it can basically block the traffic on the way of source ip destination ip source port and destination right now let's suppose you have a requirement you want antivirus protection you want anti spyware protection you want vulnerability protection if you want such kind of protection what you need you need to go with one more solution which is you need a one ips solution so if you are having legacy firewall then you need to purchase one more new box for antivirus anti spyware and vulnerability protection which is your ips so you can think it's a cisco ips or we can say it's a source fire then let's suppose after that you also need the protection for malwares you need a protection from you need a some kind of data filtering kind of features as well you need a file blocking policies kind of features as well in that case what you have to purchase one dlp solution right so let's say it's a cisco amp solution now if you want a url filtering feature then you have to purchase cisco iron port solution right so guys now what's happening it's a cisco market strategy what they used to do if you need a protection from some kind of feature what they used to have a dedicated device for that and now for getting all these features you have to put around four to five hardware models or hardware devices here now when you basically purchase these hardware boxes so you have to spend lots of money right now you have to purchase the license you have to procure the license that time also you have to put lots of money you need uh, some network engineers who can manage all these devices right so if you have a legacy design then you have to go with such kind of or such kind of solutions and they are not the good solution at all so when palo alto basically launched in 2005 what happens all these features you will just get in one box means all such kind of features you will get in one box and if i take example of your ngfw in next generation firewalls all these features you will get into in just in one box so the thing is now if you are having all these things in one box which means now you don't need a you don't need to put lots of cost right because you are getting all these thing in one box so you just need to purchase one box you just need to manage one box you don't need to manage multiple boxes here you just need a one network engineer one good network security engineer who can just manage this ngfw firewall and you are good to go so that is the main reason guys people nowadays using ngfw which is your next generation firewall solutions okay now if i'll take example of few next generation firewalls let me just write the names here so let me just write here ngfw so the most the most popular next generation firewall is your palo alto firewall then the second next generation firewall is your fortinet then third one is your checkpoint fourth one is your cisco ftd fmc these are the main four next generation firewalls if i'll write a list of legacy firewalls here so let me just write the legacy firewall so the first legacy firewall is your cisco asa then we are having juniper srx we are, we do have a sonic wall firewall we do have a sophos firewall and apart from this we do have a firewall from hp firewall from dell then we have a cyber room firewall so there are multiple firewalls as well which is a part of your legacy list right now 
what are the key features we will get into your next generation firewalls so the first key features of your next generation firewall which is your app identification means what you can do now you have a ability to write your security policies on the basis of applications and you will get the general control over the application policies which means let's suppose let's take example of facebook like so facebook is a parent application now facebook do have some other application like facebook have a application like facebook base then it also have a like a facebook chat application is there then it is also having facebook post application multiple sub application it is having right now what you can do by using this next generation firewall if you want you want to block the facebook chat app option or you want to block the facebook messenger like facebook video calling and if you want to block the facebook posting these kind of control also you will get by using this app id features of your next generation firewalls so that is the one one more reason people are migrating towards your ngfw because you will get the application support and one more benefit you will get let's suppose from your firewall you have allowed the http traffic okay and someone who is sitting in your inside network he just started the bit torrent application now when this traffic reaches to the firewall now what it will do now due to this app id feature my firewall having that much intelligence he can basically detect this traffic is a traffic for bit torrent even though if this traffic is going on http port my firewall detected by looking into the pattern by looking into the signature database of you of application database it can detect and it will basically block the traffic so that kind of visibility you will get into these next generation firewalls that's why that is also one more reason we will use next generation firewall here now another feature of your next generation firewall which is your url filtering most popular feature because guys in app id there is a one limitation almost all the firewall they have a just support of up to 3500 applications right so let's suppose if i take example of flipkart my palo alto firewall they are not having any kind of application signature for flipkart and let's say you want to block the flipkart traffic you need a url filtering solution so url filtering solution is also available with these next generation firewalls now what they can do they can basically block your urls they can also block your uri uri means if someone is putting the direct link for some of the content then it can also block and basically these five they will give you the categorization of all the urls like let's suppose you want to block the social networking site so you have to just select the category social networking just set the action block you are done your job is done so that particular feature is also there in in your actual classes we will discuss how url filtering happens what are the different different cache memory we are having in your palo alto firewall what are the url databases we are having in your palo alto firewall what is the pan db database what is the bright cloud database how my palo how you are how my palo alto firewall choose the bright cloud solution how it can basically download the url field feeds from the url database everything we will see in detail which demons are basically taking care of this url filtering the third feature is your anti virus protection so if someone is trying to basically send any kind of malicious payload by using the emails like your smtp protocols by using your pop3 protocol by using your imap protocol or let's suppose someone is sending any kind of malicious file by using ftp while downloading any file or transferring any file let's suppose you are have you are downloading some file by using http and https right so and so the thing is if some kind of malicious payload is going through that kind of payload is also detected by my next generation fire because if you want these kind of feature you need a layer 7 inspection means they need to inspect the payload at your layer 
right? So they have an antivirus feature. Then they do have a feature for your anti-spyware. They do have a features for your file policies. You can write the file policies, like you can block the uploading of your confidential files, like your office documents, your network diagrams, and you can block the downloading of your exe files or dot wet files. So these kind of files control you can also achieve by using these next generation firewalls. Apart from this, you will also get the wildfire feature in Palo Alto, which can protect you from the real time attacks. Let's suppose there is a one malware came in a market. It's a pretty new malware and, and your firewall, it is not having any kind of signature for that malware. Then what my firewall, it will stop this malware at the firewall level. It will send the copy of this malware to the Palo Alto wildfire cloud and there, they will do the analysis and if you have a subscription they will basically send you the verdict of that that particular file right away so that kind of feature also you will get into this next generation firewall apart from this you will also get the data filtering you will also get the zone protection and dos protection so these are the few features is only available into your next generation firewall so that's why basically we will use next generation firewall if someone asks what is the major difference you can just ask your next generation firewall using we can use the by using next generation firewall we can block the traffic on the so layer 3 layer 4 and layer 7 formation but using your legacy firewall we can only able to block the traffic on the basis of layer 3 and layer 4 information that's a major difference between your next generation firewall and your legacy firewall because this is the most important interview question as well now now let me why we have chosen the palo alto firewall so let me just guys i will first start with the stateful inspection and after that i will tell you why we have chosen the palo alto firewall okay so to discuss this stateful inspection let me just tell you how palo alto firewall handle the packets guys okay so let's suppose this is the test PC and we are having one server at the outside. So now from this PC, I want to access this server. So what I will do, I will just go into this PC, right? And I'll just write here. Or I open the browser and I'll just hit the www.cnets.com. I'll just exit this website. So first, your DNS lookup happens. First, my PC get the IP address of cnets.com when it will get the IP address after what? He will basically send the first packet, which is your SYN packet. It's a TCP SYN means first they will do the TCP three-way handshake because cnets.com is, it, it is hosted over the SSL or we can say it's hosted on HTTPS on TC port 443. So uh, when three-way handshake will complete, they will go for the SSL handshake. So this is how they will basically do the transaction. Now, when they will do this first transaction, which is SYN. So what this PC will do, he will create one packet like that. Let me just draw one packet here. In this packet, the source IP address is 10.1.1.100. And destination IP address is 151.7.100. This is the IP address of your cnets.com. Source port, it will choose any random port, right? So let's say it has chosen one, two, three, four, five. Just a random port and destination port is your 443. It's a send packet, so it is not having any kind of application payload. It's just have a zero payload at your layer seven. Now, when this SYN packet reaches to this Palo Alto Firewall, what he will do? Palo Alto Firewall, he will start processing this packet. So what it will do? It will receive this packet into egress interface Ethernet 1 slash 2. So what? First, it will do the ingress processing for this particular packet. So it will process the packet at ingress level. And what? It will extract your source IP destination IP, source port, destination port, and also it will extract your protocol details. 
and because he is receiving this packet into this inside interface which is ethernet one slash two so it will also get the zone detail so from this packet what he will get he will get the source ip address which is your 10.1.1.100 it will get the destination ip address which is 151.7.100 it will get the source port which is one two three four five destination port which is four four three and fifth thing we got it's a tcp packet so for tcp your layer three protocol for tcp is protocol number is six so it will get this layer three protocol number which is six and the six number information is your ingress zone it will get the ingress zone detail because we have received the packet on ethernet one slash two which is a part of your inside zone right so for this packet we are having these particular six tuple information right this six tuple information we are having with palo alto firewall so now what palo alto firewall we will do now it will what it will do it will store this information into your session table how it will store this information what it will do it will basically calculate the md5 hash it will calculate the md5 hash for this particular information and what that whatever hash value it will get that hash value is known as flow key it will generate the flow key by using these six tuple information and it will store this particular information into your float table or we can see into your session table or we can see into your connection table and how it will store the information so generally in palo alto firewall they are using mongodb database for storing this information so they will store this information into mongodb database okay now it will store this information and after it will just forward this packet towards the server now when this server give the reply when this server give the reply what it will do now my pal will to firewall it will just do the lookup into the flow table it will just do the lookup into the flow table and it will allow this particular traffic right away now how this particular thing beneficial so let me first tell you how basically what is the benefit of stateful inspection and how basically this stateful inspection thing works and how we have basically we get the benefit from the stateful inspection right so i will just draw the same diagram with one pc but this time i'm having a router because router is a stateless device and i am having one server here directly i am just denoting one server having ip address 151.7.100 and this is my pc which is having 10.1.1.100 this is the ip address right now on this server we have hosted over port number 443 so now if this pc wants to access this server he will just send a tcp syn packet to the router now when this router received this packet let's suppose he had received this packet on f0 slash zero interface so when he will receive the packet what it will do he will process the packet into multiple stages like first is stage your ingress stage then it will also check the routing table if net is there then it will go for net if your acl is there then it will also check for acl it will also check your ceph table like multiple checks is done by the router and let's suppose the major checks on your router which is your routing table net and acl these are the major checks which is performed by the router every time okay just remember this thing and let's suppose after that doing all these checks at the end it will do the forwarding it will process the packet at the forwarding stage it will just send out this packet towards this interface now let's suppose this is the first packet right 
this is the first packet just remember now let's suppose on this server i'm having one file of 2 gb and i want to download this particular file of 2 gb file into this pc from this server right so and also when this router he has processed this particular packet like ingress stage routing net acl safe forwarding stage let's suppose it's take around one second it's just a hypothetical number or let's say it has taken two seconds for doing all these particular things and your routing net and acl it took one second for processing and overall router took around two seconds right now this server he will give the reply so let's suppose to download this 2 gb of file from this server let's suppose between this firewall between this pc and this server they have sent around 100 request and we have received the 100 reply from the server right so overall they have exchange around or this router over all this router he has processed around 200 packets let's suppose now when he has processed this 200 packets how much time it has taken it has just taken around 400 seconds for processing this particular file or downloading this file from this server okay now what i will do now let's take an example of your firewall when we have a firewall here so let me just draw the firewall thing here this time same example pc1 this is my firewall and this is the server same server having ip 150.1.7.100 hosted on tcp port 443 and it is also having one 2 gb file this pc having ip to stand dot one dot one dot hundred this are your inside network and this is let's suppose your outside network here ethernet one slash two ethernet one slash one this is the setup i am having right now now same thing now if this pc wants to download this 2 gb file so what he will do he will first send the first packet which is tcp sin this is just a first packet now when this firewall he received this first packet what he will do he will process the packet at the ingress level so the guys these are the different stages of your palo alto firewall first it will process the packet at ingress stage then it will process the packet at your it will do the flow lookup then slow path don't worry i will discuss the slow path fast path everything in detail in your classes okay then it will just go for your fast path it's a sin but still let me just write the app id generally your sin packet will not go through your app engine because it is not having any kind of application data but let me just write the app id then ctd which is your content identification and the seventh thing is your forwarding stage So these are the seven stages of your Palo Alto firewall. When it will receive a packet, so it will send every packet through these stages. Now, same thing, guys. Your slow path. This is the main stage, or this is the time-consuming stage of a firewall. So let's suppose overall, he is taking the two second for processing this packet, but slow path only. It just took the one second. Okay. So after that, what it will do, it will forward the packet here. Now this server, he will give the reply. Now when my fiber received the reply of first packet, what it will do, it will only send this reply through your ingress stays. Then it will do the flow lookup. And it will just bypass your slow path and it will directly jump it towards your first path then your app id then your ctd and your forwarding so this reply it will not go through with all these check and now my file simply forward the 
packet towards this one. Now, whenever second packet is received by the firewall, second packet is also processed according to this only, not this. Now, why it is bypassing the slow path? Because what it will do, as I have mentioned, my firewall, they will create a session table, right? In session table, what it will do, it will create the flow. It will create the flow by using the source IP address, destination IP address, source port, destination port, protocol, and your ingress zone. It will use these six tuples to create the session table, or it will store the six tuple information into your session table. And in your flow lookup, what it will do, it will just do the lookup for the existing flow, and you will see all these packets belong to the same connection only, right? So means they are from the same flow. So for the same flow, they will always bypass the slow path. So guys, let's suppose they have done the 100 transaction, which means 100 requests and 100 replies, right? So total 200 packets they, wish, they have basically exchanged where? For 199 packets because if my file process the packet according to this flow, it will only take one second because here we have bypassed the slow path, right? So we have taken around 199 plus two, 201. So see the difference guys, when we have a router, it took around 400 seconds for processing the same packet. But in case of firewall, we are taking only 201 seconds just for processing the same packets so that's the basically benefit of your stateful inspection now in a stateful inspection what happens every firewall they will basically maintain the state table or we can say in palo alto what that is known as session table or palo alto is also called this table as a flow table in cisco it is known as a connection table because they will maintain this state table, session table, flow table, connection table. Everything is similar, right? In this table, basically, your Palo Alto store the six tuple information. And now, if any match is found for these six tuples, what it will do? It will bypass your slow path. And guys, for your information in your slow path, your routing, your net, your, a, your security policy, your user ID policies, everything is basically they will do in your silo path only. The major checks are available in silo path only. Okay, just remember, we will discuss packet flow in details, okay, in your classes. So that is the basically benefit of your stateful inspection. And router is a, it's a like a stateless device. It will not maintain any kind of a state table. Now, why we can choose Palo Alto Firewall, guys? So let me tell you, this particular stateful inspection, this particular technology is discovered, or we can say built by the engineer whose name is Nirzo. And he is a part of Checkpoint Tech team that time. When he had built this particular concept of stateful inspection. After that, what he has done, he has just left the checkpoint and he has started his own company whose name is Palo Alto Firewall. So he is a, also a developer of your Palo Alto Firewall. And when he has launched his Palo Alto Firewall in 2005, it is the first firewall who is having like your URL filtering, your app identification, antivirus, anti-spyware data filtering, all these kind of features is available inside just one box. And Palo Alto is the first firewall who come with the app identification. Before that, we don't have any kind of firewall who support the app ID. That is also one of the reason of your Palo Alto firewall. It become market leader and because it support all these features in one box. So just in three years, around in 2008, Palo Alto basically become the market leader in your firewall industry. And from 2008 till today, Palo Alto firewall is the market leader in your firewall 
industry. That's why Palo Alto is the most used firewall in the industries. That's why we are basically here. We are learning Palo Alto Firewall because almost all the organization, they are using Palo Alto Firewall nowadays. Even though they are, people are still using ASA, Checkpoint, your Fortinet, Juniper and all, but people are just migrating their firewalls with the Palo Alto Firewall because Palo Alto Firewall having all these features in one box and, and it is a very, very powerful device because it's architecture. Palo Alto supports architectures, which is called single pass software and parallel processing hardware. Due to this architecture, its throughput is very, very high. Okay, we will discuss SP3. What is SP3 in a bit? Okay, so that's the basically, that's, that's, that is your stateful inspection and that's why basically your Palo Alto fire will become very popular. Now, let me see what is the last topic. The so last topic for today is your SP3 architecture of your Palo Alto firewall. I'll take the help of you images to discuss the SP3 architecture. So I'll just start with the one more image I'm having. I'll start with this one. Okay. So let me just first tell you what is stateful inspection. So SP3, SP3 stands for single pass software and parallel processing hardware. Now, what is the meaning of your single pass software and what is the meaning of parallel processing hardware? So guys, if I explain this particular architecture, so let me just draw one design here. So first you have to understand the block diagram of your Palo Alto firewall. So generally in every firewall or like your Palo Alto firewall, it is having the first thing, which is your interfaces right so it is having your interface let's suppose these are the palo alto firewall interfaces so interface starting with ethernet 1 slash 1 then 1 slash 2 ethernet 1 slash 3 ethernet 1 slash 4 1 slash 5 then 1 slash 6 1 slash 7 and ethernet 1 slash 8 let's suppose we are having eight interfaces in your palo alto file now these interfaces they are having connectivity with one of the chip in your Palo Alto firewall, that chip is known as Marvel. So these interfaces, they have a direct connection with the Marvel chip. These are, these are the internal component of your firewall. If you know these component, how the data is basically processed by the Palo Alto firewall, you will understand everything. Now this particular Marvel chip, it has a connect, direct connection with one of the chip or we can say one of the processor. That processor is known as a network processor. It's a FPGA, Field Programmable Gateway Array, or we can say it's a ASIC. This Marvel chip, it has a direct connectivity with your network processor. So in, in basically Palo Alto Fire, this network processor in low end boxes, you will see Liger in high end boxes, the processor name is Tiger. Now this particular network processor, it is having the direct connection with one of the chip, that chip is known as Octeon. And guys, Octeon chip is also, it is also known as your data plane CPU. Now this chip, it has have a direct connectivity with one of the one more chip in your Palo Alto Fireball. That chip is known as a Jaguar. Okay, now, so this is the internal component of your Palo Alto Fireball. Now guys, this particular Jaguar chip, this chip is responsible for your app identification and your content identification. 
So your content, I didn't content like your URL filtering, your antivirus protection, anti-spy protection, all these things, all this content inspection is done by the Jaguar chip. And guys, in Palo Alto 5, it is having two algorithms. One is DFA and AHO. DFA algorithm they will use for app identification and AHO algorithm they use for the content identification. But this AHO algorithm now they have replaced this particular algorithm with the PS scan. This is the latest algorithm in your Pan OS 10. These algorithms they will use, they will run in this Jaguar chip to do the app identification and content identification. Apart from this, your other things like your ingress processing your flow lookup, which is your session table management and your slow path, your fast path and your forwarding. This particular thing is take care by the data plane CPU and your network processor, it will take care of your offloaded session. And that processor is also known as session offloader. Okay, now, so this is how basically your Palo Alto firewall internal component looks like. Okay. And if you go here into this diagram, so in this diagram, we are having your pal policy engine, networking, app ID, user ID and content ID. So guys, this particular chip, you can think it's a Jaguar chip. Networking, this is your Tiger or Liger chip. Or this is your networking means it is your network procedure. And your policy engine, this is your Octeon chip, which is also known as your DPCPU, data plane CPU. Okay, now, Apart from this, if you will see in this Palo Alto firewall, they have also divided his control plane and his data plane into two parts. They are having dedicated control plane or you can see management plane and dedicated data plane. So let me tell you guys, Palo Alto operating system called like PanOS is just a customized version of your BSD Linux. Okay. What they have done, they have done the, some customization on, on this BSD Linux. And on top of this, they have just installed the pen application. So your data plane, in your data plane, your pen application runs. In your management plane, your BSD Linux runs. Okay, now this particular control plane or management plane, it is, only responsible for your configuration management, your logging and your reporting. And this particular management plane, it is also having dedicated RAM, dedicated CPU and dedicated hard drive along with the one dedicated management port and along with one dedicated HA port. Okay. And the data plane of your Palo Alto firewall is divided into three planes as we have discussed. First one is your network processor, then security processor or your Octeon chip and signature match processor, which is your Jaguar chip. And all these particular processors, they are having dedicated RAM and dedicated CPUs. This is the parallel processing hardware because Palo Alto hardware is not having any kind of dependency on each other. Your signature match processor, it is having dedicated jobs to do. It is not having any kind of resource dependency on other engine, right? They can work independently because they are having their own resources. That's why Palo Alto firewall throughput is very, very high. This is the parallel processing architecture of your Palo Alto firewall. Just fly, guys, just remember, all the models of Palo Alto firewall, they don't support SP3, okay? If I'll take example of your 200 series box or your 800 series box, these 200 series, your 800 series and your BM devices, they just have your security procession. They just have one 
oction chip they don't have net dedicated network processor dedicated signature match processor this processor is not available into these particular models okay so they will not support your sp3 sp3 support is available into your 3000 devices into your 3200 series boxes 5000 series boxes 5200 series boxes and 7000 series boxes in actual your 500 series your 5200 series and your 7000 series these are the boxes they will support your actual sp3 because in these high-end boxes this particular security processor they don't have a one security processor they are having three security processors they are having three chips guys the dp0 dp1 and dp2 like data plane zero data plane one and data plane two so these on these boxes your actual sp3 is applicable okay so just remember these points okay do not don't mess this thing with the other boxes like 200 and 800 series they don't support parallel processing okay only your 5000 series 5200 series 7000 series your 3200 series and 3000 series they support just parallel processing hardware okay that is the parallel processing hardware now one more benefit you will get due to this particular parallel parallel processing kind of architecture let's suppose if someone have launched any kind of ddos attack into your data interfaces or into your data plane that time your management plane is safe because it is having a dedicated resources right what you can do you can log in into your data plane you can do the configuration to mitigate this ddos attack let's suppose some of the demon which is a part of your data plane let's take example of pencom this is the one of the demon which is running in your data plane let's suppose this pencom demon is not working fine it is behaving like it is just behaving like abnormal what you will do in other boxes if any problems you will face with the with these process and all you have to restart the box right but in palo alto firewall just restart this demon you don't need to restart the entire box if there's any issue in your management plane just restart that particular process at the management plane you don't need to restart the entire box that kind of benefit also you will get due to this parallel processing hardware architecture okay now let's discuss what is sp3 how this sp3 works in palo alto firewall so uh, let me just draw one diagram here same diagram same firewall this is my palo alto firewall one same internet service provider and let's suppose here i'm having one of the pc or i all do have one of the server on this server i'm having some kind of malicious code some kind of malicious code is there right and from this server, let's suppose that code is available in one of the software file and file size is let's suppose 10 MB for that software. I'm just downloading this 10 MB file from in from this PC, right? So means traffic is going like that. So what happens when this particular file we are downloading from this PC into this PC from this server and all this traffic going through the Palo Alto firewall, right? So now when Palo to receive the packet, how it will process the packet at your ingress stage, right? After it will do the flow lookup, then it will basically go for slow path, then your fast path, then app ID. And your here it will check your content ID, right? And seven thing is your. Let me just write here SP3 or content ID, which is CTD. And after that, your forwarding stays, right? So this is how your Palo Alto Fiber do the processing. So just remember your single pass software, it is applicable at your CTD engine level. It is applicable at your Jaguar chip level. 
at your signature match procession signature match procession now how this particular processor is basically do the single pass how we can call like it's a single pass software architecture what it will do when when we receive a packet right so when we receive any kind of malicious code right so if that particular traffic we won't we will send through the jaguar chip what we will do we will let so we have received the packet here so that packet receive on ethernet one slash one then it will go to your marble marble deliver to your tiger or liger chip this will send to your dp cpu now it dp cpu it will process at your ingress stage at your slope ingress stage then flow flow lookup then your fast slow path then fast path and it will send this packet for app id and ctd to the jaguar chip right so now let's suppose your packet is received by the jaguar chip now how this chip is process this packet so what it will do let me just write the things here so this is my firewall okay and i'm having here my jaguar chip okay this is my jaguar chip i have received the packet on my firewall now my firewall forward this packet to the jaguar chip right so in this jaguar chip what happens oh let me just explain this way not on that that way So I have received the packet. Okay. Now here I am having this is my Jaguar chip. So this is my RAM on my Jaguar chip. Okay. This is the RAM. So what happens? When I will process any packet, first I have to store that particular packet inside the RAM. So let's suppose I have stored the content of that packet in, into this RAM, right? And on top of this RAM, what I am running my engines. And here, let's suppose I am having my URL filtering engine. Then I am having here my antivirus protection engine. Then I am having my anti spyware engine. My vulnerability protection engine is there, right? I'm having these small, small, these are the small, small codes or database available in my Jaguar chip. And who is managing all these engines or databases? They are managed by the Jaguar chip using the DFA and AHO algorithms, right? So URL filtering, AV, antivirus vulnerability protection, then I'm having your data filtering, your wildfire signature is there, right? I'm having all these engines running here right what when i store this packet in, inside this ram so what these engines they will do they just take out the packet from this ram at the same time they are just taking out this packet at the same time they will process and they will just send out the results this is how they will process the packet at the same time so this is known as single pass architecture or single pass software because in single go only your packet is go through with all the engines and we will get the verdict of of this particular traffic let's suppose we are having url filtering features then we will get the url filtering related security policy hit here we will get the url of that particular that particular traffic if and it will also this packet is also checked against your antivirus databases anti spyware databases vulnerability protection databases data filtering databases wildfire signature database right all these things is happen at the same time and after that your packet go out so that is known as your single pass software only your packet needs to go once through your ctd engine it will not go it will not repeat any engines like in other firewalls. Now, let me just show you the designs of other firewalls, how they will process. So if you will see, 
let's take example of Cisco devices. So this is your Cisco ASA. Then this is your IP, Cisco IPS, or we can say just con consider like this is your Cisco URL filtering solution. Then Cisco IPS is there. Then Cisco AMP is there, right? First, that packet is processed against your policies. Coming back, again going towards your URL filtering, coming back, again going for your IPS, coming back, then again going towards your AV and coming back, right? It is processing like that. Now, why this particular single pass architecture is not possible into your Cisco devices? Let me just tell you the reason behind this. Because if you remember, Cisco, we have a Cisco ASA, right? On Cisco ASA, we are running engine, which is your Lina engine. So Cisco AC code is known as Lina engine, right? And for your next generation features like your antivirus, anti-spyware, vulnerability, for all these kind of features, Cisco has acquired one of the company, which is Sourcefire. This Sourcefire engine is known as Snort engine. So what they have done, they have put the Lina engine here which is your ASA operating system or ASA code. And on top of this ASA code, they have just added the Snort engine. So guys, because Cisco, they have not done the programming of these codes from the scratch. They have just added this particular feature on top of your ASA code. That is the reason your packet needs to go through multiple times your packet go to into your snort engine coming back to asa going back to snort coming back to asa going back to snort coming back to asa and going out that that's why basically that particular architecture is known as a serial processing but in palo to firewall because they have built the pan os from scratch right they have not basically added any kind of features later on. They have done, done the programming of this, their operating system from the scratch. That's why this SP3 architecture is possible inside this particular firewall. So that was the last topic for today, guys. Let me just see. Yep. So this is the last topic, guys, for today. Thank you, Hemu, sir. Thanks a lot for your detailed session. So guys, now you can go ahead with Q&A.